This is a Time Warner Cable community presentation. The opinions expressed in this program are solely those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of either Spectrum Generations or Time Warner Cable. Mature Lifestyle is made possible by Knowlton Hewins Roberts Funeral Homes and Cremation Service. Our homes are warm and welcoming, and we take care of you and your family like we would our own. Call us anytime. We are here for you. Hello, welcome to Mature Lifestyles. Spectrum Generations brings so many educational and uplifting programs to you. Today is a very serious program, but one that's important to all of us because united, we can do something about it. This is June, and it is Elder Abuse Month Awareness, Breaking the Silence. And that's important. We're silent about something so serious. So I have two guests here who are going to help us find out what we can do to suspect it, to prevent it, to make sure our elders are cared for and they are not subject to any kind of abuse. So I'm going to start with my legal expert over here. We have uh, Lynn Caswell. Yes. She's in the Office of Elder Abuse, is that correct? Aging and Disability Aging and Disability, Service. and she gives advice on all of these legal questions, and thank you for bringing that uh, perspective to us. And Susan Garcia, how do you pronounce your last name? Garasha. Garasha. We're going to get that right. She's the care and compliance manager over at Seniors uh, Spectrum Generations. And she can talk to what we can do to help families or what we can do to recognize these things. So why in the world would we have to designate a month as Awareness Month? Does this happen a lot in Maine? This actually happens a lot in Maine and across the nation. Really? They um, think that 84% of elder abuse cases are never reported. Um, they've done some statistical nice. surveys and they um, estimate that about 10,000 Maine residents over the age of 65 are subject to abuse Could every year. Could you tell year. us a little bit about what kinds of abuse we're talking well, about? Well, it's everything from everything. neglect, such as a caregiver who isn't properly taking care of someone. It's right. actual physical abuse, sexual abuse. It can be some form of financial exploitation where the they're... The most horrible thing you can think of as well as neglect, right. which yes, is horrible absolutely. as well. <laughs> and often they go together. If you see together. one form of abuse, you often will find another. So it's definitely um, our elders are very vulnerable as elders are, as they lose their, their physical right. and their cognitive abilities. And we have one of the oldest, fastest growing. Um, Do you see any improvement over the years as we've begun to talk about this issue? Can you tell if we're making any progress? I think we're making progress protecting them, okay. not necessarily stemming the tide of okay. people being subject to, be, to abuse. Okay. There's more community resources that are out there to help prevent abuse and there's more people who are actually reporting to either law enforcement which or, is a good thing yes, as they're absolutely, aware absolutely absolutely let me come to you what in the world can we do about that we want to make sure that as caregivers we're aware or maybe you're a driver for meals on wheels what should people look for because i suspect that an elderly person is not going to be telling anybody Right, elderly people, in the, they want to stay in the community. They so they want to stay home. They want to stay so home. they're not making waves. Right, and so some of the signs could be bruising. Okay. Um, something that's going on, maybe a lot of pain. Somebody could be taking their pain medication. Oh, I see. Um, it could be they don't have, depending on who's contacting them, they might not have money to pay their bills anymore. Okay, so they're getting behind and their uh, bill payments and that bill sort of payments. thing. But how would you know about, let's say you're a neighbor, you might not know that, would you? Well, I think that there's some signs that okay. you can see. I think um, if, you know, if there was a, a woman in the community who always dressed very nicely and all of a sudden or over time you notice that she's not really keeping herself the way she used to be, yes. that is usually a sign that there might be some um, decline going on or if you all of a sudden your neighbor has a grandchild who's come and moved in and um, seems to be very interested that's often not a good sign I mean most family members are good 
to their right, elders. Right. But most uh, abusers, perpetrators, are family members. Oh dear. So um, anything kind of out of the ordinary. Um, when a change, well, so, okay, let's say that you notice that, maybe someone tells you, what can one do about it? What can a senior do or what can a, a neighbor do when they think uh, that there's some abuse going on? There's actually, a, I mean, if you suspect that it's serious abuse or neglect, physical or, right. or um, financial, then you can call Adult Protective Services. Okay. Anyone can call. It's confidential. Uh, no one will know the report. You don't have to have evidence. You just have to suspect. And the professionals will then step in and investigate and protect. Okay. But there's also community resources, such as the AAAs in the area. Yes. There's legal services for the elderly that can help elders get their finances, you know, a power of attorney in place. Right. They can call their um, faith-based organizations, might be able to step in and, you know, or a child that you know, if they have a daughter or a son that you know has really cares about them, reaching right. out to them to the and other saying, family members. yes, do you know or are you aware that? Um, that often helps prevent. Tell me a little bit about your work in trying to prevent this from happening in the first place, which would be the best course of all, wouldn't it? Well, at Spectrum Generations and also at the other AAAs across the state, um, there are a number of services that we can do to, to help. Um, one of them is Money Minders, um, where we have trained, um, checked volunteers that go out and can help. Oh, a, that's great. A so senior pay their bills, balance their checkbook. It's a check volunteer book. service. It's a volunteer. And if a senior asks you, you can assign someone and you've checked them out ahead of time. Absolutely. So you know they're not going to be doing anything wrong. Absolutely. And then they help with the bills. They can, they'll help them. Pay the they, bills. they won't sign the checks. No, no, but they but. will make sure that the records are being kept properly and the mm. things are being paid on time. Yes. Well, that's a wonderful service. And, and, and what else do? Our Meals on Wheels. Of course. When, when you're talking about some of the seniors can't afford to pay for their food, they might be homebound uh, or disabled adults also. Um, and it's also a way of socializing, mm -hmm. which right. your elderly need, uh, we all need. We all need it, we exactly. Need. And, and it's also, uh, I'm sorry, it's also a check-in. You exactly. know, it's somebody having, seeing this individual once, twice, or more a week. And they, some of these people actually build friendships, so it might be somebody that they're comfortable with, sure. that they might they share might something. They might confide in, that something's that they, going on, yeah. And plus, the Meals on Wheels volunteers are also trained um, to recognize signs of abuse. Do you ever see on the legal front people signing over a house to a son or a daughter and then all of a sudden they have no home anymore? Absolutely. So a lot of people are afraid that they're going to need long-term care services mm -hmm. and that the state is going to take, take all of their money. And it, th there is main care and there, there is an obligation to repay. But turning your assets over to your kids to protect your inheritance, which is not necessarily a bad thing, it can lead to a lot of problems. And people do it. And then if you need nursing home care within five years of signing or transferring, um, the state is going to impose a penalty they on you. They look back for they a number of years. They look back for five years. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you'll give your, your child your house and they'll say and you can live here for the rest of your life and next thing you know they are making your life miserable they, and they may, want you to leave and they want you to leave or they force you to leave and you have no rights because you've signed them over well you have rights but it's very hard okay. once you've been pushed out of your house to get back in and it's probably difficult for an elderly person to sort of fight back they don't it's embarrassing yes they, it's their family and they That's don't right. want to tell you that do they and they don't want their family to get into trouble no. they don't want them to be sued or taken to court right um, they want to be to you know have a dignified independent life um, they don't want That's to all they anyone. wanted in the first That's place right. and exactly. they thought that they that would work out that's right so there are ways to do that in a planful way um, and my advice being a lawyer would yes. be go to see an attorney and there's um, legal services for the elderly which any main resident over the age of 60 can call and talk to a lawyer for free so and in fact there are practices out there who uh, bill themselves as elder yes. law specialists right yes. and they know how to advise and and um, so before an elder signs anything over they should Careful. have someone else 
give them their own advice, yes. Exactly. All right, what else do you have going on that is helpful to families? Well, not all fam I mean, family caregivers have a hard job. They do, don't they? And not all of them stressful. are, it's very stressful, and not all of them are necessarily out to get mom's right. money. They just get frustrated, um, don't they? <laughs> they get frustrated. They're also taking, they might be taking care of their children. Mm -hmm. they they might be in a situation where if their loved one has dementia, it's not the same person. It's trying right. to learn how to deal with this person that I really don't know anymore. Um, so and who doesn't know you? And who doesn't right. know you or who doesn't act like they used to and they're mm -hmm. still my husband, my mom, right. whatever. Okay. So we have uh, family caregiver support specialists oh, who wonderful. are social workers and they can help in a number of ways. They can help reach out for available resources uh, in the community that can help them like adult day uh, there are adult day programs where folks can come for the day where it's a safe place to socialize and allow the caregiver maybe to go to work right so right. they're not stressed out or leaving mom or the husband home because alone it be safe that it's not safe exactly. and then and um, yet they don't want to put mom in the nursing home absolutely and so this lets them continue their job and take care of the parent it does and there's also um, and respite the, care would be important anyway, even if you didn't have a job. Absolutely, because they? they need to take care of themselves, so they're not so stressed. In the and there's also um, home care services. We have bridges, but there's many others in the community where an aide can come out into the home and help mom, dad, husband do some activities, personal care. So. Like you said, the caregiver yeah. can have a break and go out, maybe get their hair done. <laughs> well, that's important. Or, this is an extraordinarily important topic. It affects all of us. Stay tuned and you'll learn more about how we can help one another and make sure our elders are well cared for. We'll be right back with more. Life should be celebrated. It's a special day when family and friends gather together to celebrate the life of a loved one. A celebration of life helps us honor our loved one and keep our memories alive. Whether you're planning a traditional funeral, a creative celebration of life, or a blend of both, at Knowlton Hewins Roberts, we are truly committed to meet the personal and unique needs of you and your family. Knowlton Hewins Roberts. Visit us online or visit our two locations in Augusta and Winthrop. Spectrum Generations. Live healthy. Live well. Get answers, get connected. Spectrum Generations, specializing in the art of aging. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. always wanted to be. Don't let your hands mouth off. Get out from behind the screen. Let your lips do the talking. Words can hurt. So cut the cyberbull and ask yourself, would you say it to my face? Cyberbullying leaves a mark. Come on, think before you type. The decision is in your hands. For more info, check us out online at sayittomyface.org. The Say It To My Face campaign and Time Warner Cable, working together to stop cyberbullying. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? 
you need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second Spin Mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-805-5690 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry, call 1-800-805-5690. Call now. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? Are you struggling to make ends meet because you owe more in taxes than you can afford to pay? The IRS is relentless and will collect from you. They can garnish your wages or place a levy on your bank account. You have rights, and you can stop them by calling the tax resolvers. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, our qualified CPAs, tax negotiators, and support staff know the law and know how to get your situation under control legally and permanently. Call the number on your screen now, and we will contact the IRS on your behalf. Help you end wage garnishment, stop collection calls, remove tax liens, resolve tax penalties, and reduce the amount you owe if you qualify. It's a free call and a free consultation, but we can only help if you pick up the phone and dial the number below. You wouldn't fix your car without going to a mechanic, so why face the IRS without an experienced company that can help you? If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, call now and find out how we can help you resolve your IRS problems. Call the tax resolvers at 800-506-1960. You're watching Time Warner Cable Community. Welcome back to Mature Lifestyle. We are discussing a really important topic. It's tough, but we're learning that united we can break the silence and make sure that elders are not abused because we're not going to tolerate that. We have zero tolerance for elder abuse. And this is Awareness Month. We have a legal expert. We have someone with Spectrum Generations who does care for families and helps us know what to do when something goes wrong. We've been talking about some of the signs of an elder who's being abused, and we've also talked about they're very proud. They don't want to tell anybody, and family members are certainly not going to tell you. So tell me about your agency, and you said you've learned sometimes through the Meals on Wheels drivers. They might notice something's happening. Tell us a little more about how we can recognize these signs. And You don't have to be a Meals on Wheels driver. Other people can notice things and tell somebody. Could you talk to us a little more about that? Well, anybody can notice differences yeah. like Lynn had mentioned. So look, Lynn. right? Look. Pay attention. Pay attention. Don't be afraid. I think we're all afraid to be involved. Yes. We need to stop Not that. my problem. Hmm. You know, it's, it's... It's everybody's problem. It's the community. Yes. We're all in it together. You are so right. And, and we just need to pay attention. And if you feel that there's something different, something going on, don't talk yourself out of it because it's probably, there's probably something going on. Can you remind us again what we can do about it? I've noticed something. I've noticed, uh, I've seen my neighbor and she seems to have a few bruises. Sometimes when she's out, I've never noticed that before. She says she fell down, but then a week or so later, I noticed them in a different place. What should I do? I think, like Lynn said, uh, if you really are suspecting abuse, yeah. to call Adult Protective Services. Call Adult Protective. There's a number there, and yes. you can get help. They're going to come out and check it out. Yeah. And if you're wrong, it's okay, right? Because you're, you're anonymous when you make the call. Absolutely. So you don't have to be embarrassed. It's better to make a mistake, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And, and if, if an elderly person feels that they need some legal assistance because they know that they're not being treated well and they can't afford it, what can they do? They can call Legal Services for the Elderly. They have a helpline. It's okay. answered by a live human being. Uh, Good. It's five not one of those wait, punch this number. Nope. It's, oh. a, it's a live person who, okay. and usually within three days, they will get a phone call back from a lawyer who will talk to them about what their situation is. They can, right. if they're being abused, they can help them get protection from abuse orders. 
Okay. Um, they can help them with... So the court can step in and say absolutely. protection from abuse and this attorney on your helpline yes. can tell them how to do that. And actually I have a, a good story oh, that good. I can share yes, with please. you from some LSE um, case. There was from a, what? It, it was a... Legal services legal for the elderly. Legal services okay. for the elderly, yes. Um, an el uh, elderly woman who lived on her own um, was befriended by a business owner down the street and the business owner was isolating her, was physically abusing her. Oh no. And her a neighbor noticed that um, this woman wasn't coming out as much. So the neighbor arranged for this woman to call legal services for the elderly. While at that one moment of time when the business owner down the street wasn't around and reached out to legal services for the elderly. It was such an egregious situation that two legal service for the elderly lawyers and a law enforcement officer went to this woman's home that very day, wow. um, confronted the owner of the business down the road um, and got that relationship ended and got some uh, protections in place for that woman. And that was just a neighbor trying to a do the right A neighbor stepped thing. in, yes. showed her how to call, yes. and then the legal services stepped in and carried right. the rest of the way. And if they had called if that if they had called adult protective services, the same thing would have happened. Right. So there are many, have, many ways to get into the Absolutely. Help. Absolutely. So it and it probably saved this woman's life. I mean people right. who are abused, um, elders are three times more likely to die within ten years than mm -hmm. the normal population. So just someone stealing your money or um, the stress that the must stress. cause and uh, because you've Decrease. been independent you're trying right. to be independent and, and it, you have no control that's right decreases your life expectancy and how about family members who are trying very hard to do the right thing but they might suspect something they might suspect a neighbor or they might suspect one of the other family members <laughs> taking their advantage. brother or their sister yeah their brother or their sister that really is tough isn't it they can, I mean, we have some folks that call us at the Area Agency on Aging and we'll discuss the situation. And, and so they can talk to you confidentially to get absolutely. some ideas. And we can either, we'll call APS, also Adult Protective Services, and we also um, encourage them to call. And that's a difficult situation. It is, because isn't it? It's, because it's a relative. It's a relative. But again, it's... But they've already reached out to you. They know something is wrong, and they want to do something else. Right. Are they, and, but you've talked about the strain sometimes and the stress of trying to balance caregiving for a, an elderly relative or parent and raising your own kids and trying to work and just having a tough time. It's pretty stressful. You've talked about ways that you, you can help the families try to deal with this to avoid the abuse in the first place. Could you talk a little more about that? Sure. For example, just the other day, uh, Liz, one of the social workers over at Spectrum Generations was telling me about somebody who had called and it was a son who was calling because he was very distraught at himself because he had just yelled at his mother and he had basically right. he lost, lost him. It. He lost he, it. He lost <laughs> it. His mom had dementia and it was just a real difficult oh. time trying to care for her and just Frustrating and he for recognized him. it though and reached out for help. That's he went really in commendable, his isn't it? And basically locked himself in and oh. you know um, actually probably had some tears also. Oh, I'm sure he's very sensitive but, trying to take care of, and she had dementia, so she probably didn't even know who right. he was. And you know, so he reached out. We do some form, phone support, but we also have support groups where people can get together and just talk about the stressors and right. what's and it like, what how do you cope, through. et cetera. And even though we're all different individuals and your mom, your loved one is different, they're still all going through a lot of the same things. And exactly. just knowing that I'm not a bad person, some of these feelings are very normal. Mm -hmm. And it's just learning you know, more about the disease, more about you know, how other people are dealing with it. And sometimes you get great ideas in these support exactly. groups. Have you had any reports back to you, let's say from your volunteer drivers or other people who are trained, they recognize things and, and they, they do tell people, do you have any stories that maybe come to mind about that? 
or any, are you either somebody who's reported to you just because they're a good neighbor and they were sensitive? You talked about the business person who was taking yeah. advantage. Actually, um, it's not a neighbor, it's financial institutions. There's a new program. Oh, that's an idea. That has just been launched. It's called Senior Safe. And the, the financial institutions in Maine have stepped forward because they often see, mm. they know their customers, and they often see the signs of financial exploitation. Exactly. Which is, they may come into the um, bank and be somewhat confused. They're having trouble balancing their checkbook. Or they used to come into the teller every day, and now they're going through the drive through and there's a new person in, in the, the car, car with them. Telling them what to do, potentially. Right. Mm -hmm. Or they're coming in because they um, get an, an email that says their grandson is in the Heathrow airport and has lost everything. Oh, Please yes. send a $5,000 check. And they're trying to do that. Yes. And the... And so when they see this, the banks have instituted this new program that they will reach out to the area agencies on aging, to APS, to law enforcement, to the Office of Securities to connect these elders with resources that can help prevent, they call it stemming the tide. Um, so that's another group that has said, similar to doctors who see um, abuse, and, and neglect, and they're required to report it. Banks aren't required, they've voluntarily- But, the, but that's a wonderful community yes, support, isn't a, it? Yes, so the financial institutions have decided and that- And what's the program called? It's called Senior Safe. Senior Safe. Yes, and it was just launched in February. It's gotten a lot of national attention. Um, and As well it should. <laughs> yes, and it's um, really strengthening the relationship between the organizations, both public and private, that are trying to protect and um, and I suspect on the legal side, thinking about financial, suppose they've talked someone in, someone has talked them into signing over a power of attorney. Right. There should be a warning there to seniors. If you do that, that person can do anything you could do. And in the banking arena, I'm sure that must show up from time to time. Yes. And um, I'll have to say they can't necessarily do anything. Right. It's, <laughs> it's constrained by what the, the what document the power says. says. Exactly. But most of them would allow them. Would allow that. And a lot of elders don't realize they can actually change their mind and say, no, I don't want that person anymore. I want to revoke that, and I want to identify another person to help me. So banks um, see are that, sensitive, are sensitive, sensitive to, that. to that. And they might call your office. They might call our office. They might call any of the other community partners to try and get that senior some advice on how to prevent further neglect oh, that's or wonderful. exploitation. One of the other um, issues that come up sometimes is health insurance questions, because oh, sometimes there are some people that might make some phone calls and try to talk a senior into changing their plan or buying a new supplemental mm -hmm. plan or whatever. Um, the area agencies on aging also, uh, the staff are state health insurance program counselors, right. and they can look at some of these what somebody's right. trying to sell them well, and you two have been extraordinarily helpful this is an important month it's an important month to enjoy family it's an important month to protect family we hope you'll join us again on mature lifestyles for such important issues and let's stick together and end abuse against our senior citizens 